I'm getting ready to take this periwinkle, I guess is the best name for this color, sort of a lavender bluish color countertop um, into this century. Go with something neutral. I don't know what I was thinking when I did this, but the whole bathroom was painted lavender at that time, and I really thought it looked cute. Um, and it, it's time. It's time to change it. So what I'm going to use is spread stone. The, it comes in a kit, and there. this is the top coat one, but you can see it says spread stone. You can get it like at Home Depot, I think. And uh, it comes in three steps. So you have the base coat, and then the coat that has all the speckles in it and the actual stone finish in it. And then the top coat, which is the sealer that comes on at the very end. What I've done so far is tape all around it so that I don't get it on the walls. And the kit comes with, I guess I should show you this, but I've sanded it, so I'll go over that part. The kit comes with all three of the parts that you paint on. I've opened this one to start to stir it, and it's really, really thick. This is like barely just starting, well, it's like a sort of a liquidy cake icing or just barely starting to melt. Morning, Jerry. Morning, uh, Tanya. It's like a barely starting to melt custard. It's, it's actually pretty thick. And the kit comes with a couple pieces of um, sandpaper. This is an 80 grit, a really rough one, and that's the one I scuffed the countertop up with already. I cut it in half to make it easier to use in my hand. It was this size. And this one is a 120, and we'll use it in part three. And then it comes with a little rolling tray, three rollers. I've put one on here already, a brush, and some gloves, a mask for when you're sanding, instructions on how to do it and how to use the mask. And I provided the stir stick, the can opener, the tape, and all that, but I wanted to show you what all colors this comes in. Um, they sent me samples to begin with, and I'm wanting this room, I, I thought this bottom counter, uh, this bottom with doors were gonna be painted brown, and then I changed my mind, and now they're Vintage Duck Egg by Dixie Bell. I decided that the brown was too much with the yellow. This was supposed to be a cream wall, and by the time we did the whole bathroom in it, it's yellow. So there was a little bit of changing, but here's like, I can just show you the array of colors that this comes in. So you can choose near about anything. The one I chose is, let me see, none of those. Gosh, I hope it's this one, that's pretty. That's called Yosemite Cream. Where are we at here? Canyon Gold. This is a color that I chose because I thought it would look good with the yellow. And let's hope it looks good with the blue cabinets because that's before I found out I was going to paint the cabinets blue. But anyway, I, I, they sent me the samples. And I have two of everything. That's why there's so many to make sure with. And I thought that was a pretty good deal too. But they probably have the samples at um, Home Depot. But if you look at it real close, there's... I guess the sheen it's going to have a afterwards, and there's a little bit of texture to it, and we'll go over that some more in part two and three, because you sand that down as much as you want to sand that down, so it can have as much texture as you want. So I picked my color, Canyon Gold, hopefully that's going to look good with these yellow walls, and I actually painted the walls before I decided on that, so let's get the other stuff out of the way and get this on here. So what I did already this morning was uh, after I taped it up, and I don't know whether this was a blonde moment or a good moment, I taped all of it up and then I sanded and some of the yellow paint had got on this back edge. So then whenever I started sanding that, of course I messed up the tape. But had the tape not been there already, I probably would have messed up the walls. So I just put a little more tape over the areas that messed up and kept on trucking. And I have a cup of water here because I'm uh, going to need to put this brush in the water, you know, to be able to use again for the second coat. This first coat's going to dry about a half an hour, and then I'm going to put a second coat on. 
So already, let me just show you that. What you do with the 80 grit, the really rough sandpaper, is just kind of go in a circular motion, and especially on your edges and corners and, and things like that. And you're just roughing it up to give it a little bit of tooth for this Fates coat to hang on to. So that's already been done, and I'm going to wipe off that dust with just a wet paper towel so that it, you know, we make sure and have a smooth surface to for that to adhere to. And I'm just going to wipe it right on the floor. Got to sweep in here after anyway. But this is just damp, so I'm not putting a whole lot on here. And I've got this one upside down for right now. This is the one that has all the little speckles in it. That's the step two. And it says whenever you're stirring that to make sure and, you know, pull all the little speckles up that may have settled to the bottom. So I don't know if I'm being smart right now or not. But in my mind, I'm thinking I want it upside down for a while to where they'll all fall to the top and make my part two life a little bit easier. This countertop, we built this house in 2003, and we were supposed to put um, solid surface countertops in here then, and our budget got tight, and we didn't want to go over budget, so we were like, oh, we'll go ahead and put in the laminate for now, just pick out something, get it done, and we'll come back and replace it later. Well, it hadn't happened yet, and... It probably could be happening right now if I didn't want to play in the paint all the time. I taped around the sink really good. You don't have to cover up the whole sink like this, but um, I'm the kind of girl that makes a bit of a mess. And I'm, like I said, I'm not leaving this damp or anything. This is a pretty dry for a damp paper towel. And it says in the instructions to start out with the brush and get all the edges, get the parts that are, you know, next to the wall and all inside the corners and all that kind of stuff. It actually, mine didn't need much stirring at all. I was thinking it was, I was surprised that it was going to be this light color because it says warm on the warm step one on the top and I expected it to be like a brown color, but it's not. So they're the boss of this, not me. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if I need to bring you any closer, but it's, we're not going to put on a very thick coat. I'm going to go with a thin coat to begin with because we're going to be putting on a second coat. And with the second coat, which can happen in about 30 minutes, you can go back over these edges and corners and all that and then just um, when we get to the rolling part, just roll back over the areas where you can see the old color through. But because this old color is pretty funky, I don't want to chance any of this showing through. And I'm going to put a full coat on everything again. Because it is, you know, does appear to be showing through here. And because this is El Cheapo laminate that's, you know, 15 years old, there's a lot of aging and the creases and things there where you can see that the glue that they put the laminate on there with has started to yellow and you see a lot of that in those creases so it's important to me to make sure and fill those in really good so that that doesn't show as much later because I'm hoping that it at least from a distance looks like a real countertop that from the samples that they sent me I'm, I'm very very impressed
right this minute. I'm not too worried about my brush strokes. I didn't read anything about worrying about the brush strokes in there. And there's going to be so many layers by the time this is done. Um, you know, I'm trying not to leave any great big thick ones anywhere. But that's not my biggest concern or anything right now. I'm going to go over this seam. That's what it's called. This seam real good because I know that's the part that's going to bother me. That I'll be so more impressed with in the end if that seam's not showing. This is a pretty small bathroom. This isn't a very big, you know, countertop or anything. I think the I read that the kit does like 50 square feet or something like that. So you could do a decent sized bathroom with one kit. And I was also impressed whenever I was reading it this morning that you can do this over concrete. You know, I guess if you had a concrete countertop, but I'm thinking like the concrete benches and things like that that you have outside. Um, but it also said that it could be used over wood. So say if you had a tabletop you were wanting to redo or a piece of furniture or something like that and you wanted it to appear to have a stone top, then you could use this for that as well. You just scuff it up just the same way we did for this laminate. I'm also impressed with the fact that this part dries pretty fast. I was reading on that. It said about 30 minutes between this first and second coat. Then we're going to go a couple hours um, between that final coat and the, the stone coat part. And then a couple more hours between the coats on that to get it how you want it before we start sanding on it. And then... At the very end, after we get the top coat and everything on it, it's just a, a 24 hour wait for it to be dry and seven days cure time before it's just like a countertop that you can use for forever without worrying about it. I'll be rolling in a minute. I'm just trying to get real good around the sink area and get all of this. Let's see if it'll turn. Once again, I'm, my least favorite part is these seams, so I really want them to be camouflaged, so I'm going to spend a little extra time on them. This almost feels like a, like the clay-based and chalky-based mineral paints and things like that that I use all the time, but you can tell it has a little bit more texture to it. There's some kind of grit or tooth or something to it that I can feel as it's dragging a little bit. And I'm guessing whatever that is, is like the hardener that's in there. To make it long lasting. I know I'm fixing the belly up to this in a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. that's the kind of mistakes I'll make. <laughs> okay, let's put let me get this out of here. 
some of this in our rolling pan. I wanted you to see how thick this pours. I'm going to go ahead at this point and here I just splattered it everywhere. That's also what I do. Um, I ain't that pretty pink girl. Okay. Tilt you back up to that end. Can you see how thick it is whenever I'm rolling it? You like a thick pudding. But anyway, I'm going to not use that brush anymore right now. And I don't want it to, you know, this paint to go ahead and harden on it or anything. So I stuck it in that cup of water. And I will clean that brush because I don't know. It doesn't smell strong or anything. So that's, but I still don't know, you know, all of the ingredients on this and all that kind of stuff. What kind of hardeners it may have in it that would, you know where I would ordinarily possibly just wrap my brush in plastic wrap and stick it over there for a couple of hours. They recommend that you clean it, so I'm going to clean it. They're the boss of me right now when it comes to this project. And let's see what happens. It rolls on. I read that also in the instructions that it would be um, to do like a cross hatch pattern later whenever we're doing the next part but on this part it didn't have any specifics so I'm just going to get it on there and then make it straight this roller is leaving a little bit of texture but you know like I showed you with the sample there's a little bit of texture to this anyway and Get some of that same texture going on these other pieces. This is really not going to take very long at all. And with it drying so quick, I'll be finished with this this weekend. So, let me get this out of here. So far, so easy. Easy peasy. Thankful for the tape. Whoever decided that sinks needed to be so close to the back of the countertop was not a countertop painter. After this, there's only one countertop left in my house that I haven't redone, and that's um, the master bathroom. And it's a funky blue color, so it is probably next. But I will, I normally don't ask my husband very much at all because he and I have so different of taste what he likes in anything but I love these samples so much I already had my mind made up and I had already told him which one I wanted but um, I brought the samples out there to him and in his man cave one evening and I'm like look at this for one I wanted him to know it was going to have a little bit of texture so he didn't think I did something wrong later on but 
I showed him those and you know I had already picked out this canyon gold because I wanted it to this is off right off of the guest bedroom that we just recently redid and he picked out a gray and his second choice was a gray and I'm like oh well dude I done painted them walls yellow we ain't getting gray um so maybe I'll surprise him and do and he, he, blue is his favorite color Maybe I'll surprise him and we'll paint the walls in there in that master bathroom blue and do a, order the gray in this to do that, that, that countertop. Okay, I can tell a little bit where I went over where I had cut in with the brush, where I went over with the roller that we're gonna definitely get really good coverage in a minute. There's three of these rollers, but I'm probably gonna wrap this one in plastic wrap and see what happens, just so I'll know for next time, and I'll let you know if you're interested in that. But hopefully you can see all of that. We're gonna let this dry for 30 minutes. I'm probably just gonna wrap this whole tray up with plastic wrap. and. Then I'm gonna come back in here in 30 minutes and I'm gonna get the second coat on and then we have to run to town for something. And whenever I come back and I work on it this afternoon, I'll come back on and share with y'all the part of putting the, um, the stone part on there. I'm really excited about that. I don't know why in my mind I thought this was gonna be the Canyon Gold color, the base color of it and that I was going to be sprinkling those specks on it. So things are just not what, what you think. It's not, not what I was thinking at all. So I, we're going to be rolling that on as well. And I'm kind of excited about it. And man, I got paint. How, how did I even do that? All the way up in the on that tape. Thank goodness I taped it up, right? <laughs> Thanks for joining me. And if you've done your countertops or interested in doing your countertops, let me know. I would love to see it or hear about it. And know what your experience was and i'm happy to share mine bye thanks for the thumbs up and the hearts